Today we're going to make a tiki classic, the scorpion bowl. For this drink, you're going to need a tiki bowl or a punch bowl, a jigger, a bar spoon, a cocktail shaker, long fancy straws, citrus juicers, a fine mesh strainer, and a cutting board and a small knife. This drink uses gold Cuban style rum, gin, brandy, orgeat, simple syrup, freshly squeezed lime juice, and freshly squeezed orange juice. With optionally an orange wheel, an orchid, and mint for garnish. The Scorpion Bowl is a tiki classic. It was invented in the 1940s by Trader Vic in Oakland, remixed at the Luau down in Beverly Hills a decade later, and refined by Smuggler's Cove back up in San Francisco half a century after that. It's a punch that's a combination of a couple different drinking traditions. It has roots in both America and Polynesia, both dating back centuries. And it was one of Vic's three most famous drinks, along with the Mai Tai and the Fog Cutter. In the 1940s when the Scorpion Bowl was created, punch had fallen out of fashion. As David Wonderich writes in his books, from the 1670s to the 1850s, punch was king. It was the life of the party and the centerpiece of a social event. But by the end of the 1800s, it started to begin to fade. And by prohibition, it was all but forgotten. In his 1946 book of food and drinks, Vic talked about wanting to revive the lost art of punches. He wanted to create communal drinks to liven up the evening with the affectation of a ritual. Just as Vic took Don the Beachcomber's tiki bar concept and amped it up, he also took the American colonial era concept of punch and reinvented it for the 20th century. He developed backstories, served them in themed ceramic bowls, and garnished them with a big floral centerpiece, usually gardenias. And instead of everyone ladling punch from the bowl into their individual glasses, they each got a straw and drank from the same bowl. Vic drew inspiration from the communal Polynesian ritual of kava. He even named a drink on his menu after it. However, his drink bore little resemblance to its Polynesian namesake. Kava is a plant that was prevalent throughout the South Pacific. The plant was macerated, ground, chewed, and spat into a communal earthen bowl during parties, luau's, and while entertaining distinguished guests. It was an intoxicating drink, and the life of the party. So of course with the arrival of the missionaries and explorers, it had to go. Along with tiki gods, grass huts, and topless wahinis. Then the missionaries were aware of a strange but traditional sound. Jane, that girl. How oh, shocking. Disgusting. Depends on the point of view, Mrs. Ely. The Hawaiians, the Hulas, a sacred ceremonial dance telling a story. A hundred years later, after a lot of these traditions had been paved over, a number of them were incorporated back into tiki bar culture. In order to help inject the party atmosphere into his restaurants, Vic co-opted the communal aspect of the kava bowl ceremony. And while he borrowed the name, the chewed and stewed bird's nest of roots were replaced with exotic rums and juices. He created several early tiki punches, like the kava and the gremlin, but it was the scorpion bowl that had the biggest impact. Over the years, Vic tinkered with the recipe. It originally included white wine, gin, and mint, but he eventually favored orange over lemon and ditched the wine, the gin, and the mint. However, the recipe never strayed too far from its kissing cousin, the fog cutter. About 10 years later, Vic's recipe was reinterpreted by the crew of the Luau in Beverly Hills. They swapped light rum for gold, rebalanced the spirits, replaced lemon with lime, favored the orange as the dominant citrus, and split the sweetener between orgeat and simple syrup. Half a century after that, this recipe was further tweaked by Smuggler's Cove to favor the orgeat over the simple syrup. They also scaled the recipe up to serve four. However, I would go so far as to say you could ditch the simple syrup. Just boost the orgeat to make up for the missing sweetness. This will simplify the already complicated recipe and will beef up the wonderful almond flavor, which is never a bad thing. For the orgeat, the 12 bottle bar homemade version is always the best way to go. If you don't have it or can't make it for whatever reason, store-bought versions like Lourjat or Orjat Works are good options. Lourjat is technically a liqueur, but it's just a long-lasting shelf-stable Orjat, which means you don't have to refrigerate it. When Vic would make the drink, he would opt to garnish it with the gardenia. However, I like to create a bouquet with an orchid and a bed of mint. The orchid is the universal tiki drink signifier, and the mint harkens back to the original recipe. Plus, it looks great in the center of the drink. 
Serve the drink in your favorite vessel. A tiki bowl, a punch bowl, a soup bowl, whatever you got. In this case, I'm serving it in the drummer bowl from Disneyland's tiki bar, Trader Sam's. The bowl was built to handle fire elements. But this more classical approach to the scorpion didn't need any pyrotechnics. Most times you'll see this one served with 20 inch straws. I like it with the 9 inch bamboo straws. That way you gotta get up close and personal. Everybody's friends here. You're already drinking out of the same bowl. You can't be that afraid of cooties. Besides, the bamboo straws evoke just the right tiki aesthetics. As usual, for all the spirits, feel free to use your favorite bottles. In this one, I like to keep all the spirits on the dry side. So London dry gin, dry Cuban style rum, and even a relatively dry brandy. This will help balance out the sweetness of the syrups and the orange juice. This punch is on the boozy side and does not shy away from the gin. So in that sense, it's in touch with its American colonial punch roots. It's not as big, complicated, and flashy as some tiki bowls. But when you taste it, it'll let you know that it's a classic for a reason. Before I get started, I like to cut, squeeze, strain, and bottle my citrus juices. That way it's easier to pour when it comes time to measure. Then whack the rim of the bowl with your mint sprig to release some oils and help activate that great aroma. Next, prep your garnish. Cut an orange wheel. It's okay if it's a little on the thick side. Then feed the bundle of mint and orchid through the center of the orange. The orange wheel acts as a sort of lily pad to help anchor the mint in the flower. That way the garnish will hold together as you drink your way to the bottom of your punch. Then measure out about two cups of ice and pour that in your bowl. Normally with a Boston shaker, we'd build the cocktail in the smaller tin. In this case, because it's such a big drink, we're gonna build it in the larger one. Next, measure out four ounces of gin. Add that to the shaker. With this jigger, that's two pours. Measure out four ounces of gold Cuban style rum. Add that to the shaker. That'll also be two pours. Measure out two ounces of brandy. Add that to the shaker. Measure out two ounces of orgeat. Add that to the shaker. Measure out an ounce and a half of simple syrup. Add that to the shaker. Measure two ounces of lime juice. Add that to the shaker. Measure four ounces of orange juice. Add that to the shaker. And again, that'll be two pours. Now that your shaker's almost full, you'll see why it was so important to use the bigger tin. Add a little ice and give everything a quick stir to integrate and agitate the ingredients. We'll let the cracked ice in the bowl do most of the chilling and diluting. Pour the contents of your shaker unstrained into your bowl. Top it off with some more cracked ice. You'll end up with approximately three cups of ice in your bowl. Then work in all of your straws and your flowery centerpiece for garnish. And there it is, the life of the party, the scorpion bowl, Akole Maluna. You can support this channel by clicking on the Patreon link here. Check out some more videos, be sure to subscribe and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For links, more info, and the printed recipe, check out the description below.